There's no piano in the building, although there have been many occasions of people hearing piano music coming from different rooms. When you go to investigate it, it's now moved to a different area. And you follow that and go there and, and you know, the piano music now is downstairs or something of that nature. In the town of Seymour, a Connecticut community comprised of about 16,000 people, stands a three-story home from the 19th century. Local industrialist William Henry Harrison Wooster built the home in 1894. It was most recently used as a restaurant called Carousel Gardens. Along with all the classic features of a Queen Anne-style home, rounded turret, bay windows, and wraparound porch, the 20-room mansion includes a large kitchen, dining area, and bar. It is also rumored to have ghosts. Paul Sharafa bought the home in the 1990s, opened the restaurant, and lived there with his wife. A lifelong believer in ghosts, Mr. Sharafa says his experiences at the Wooster home have confirmed his beliefs. Friendly bats, he says, have followed him from room to room and then disappeared. Money, particularly dimes, has materialized from out of nowhere, and strangers he believes to have been apparitions have dined at the restaurant. Mr. Sharafa believes they were spirits because they knew more information about the original owners than they should. We'd continuously ask them questions, and then it was time for them to go, they would leave, and then we'd have one more question and we'd walk out. There'd be no car, there'd be nothing, there'd be no footprints, the person was just gone. The Woosters had one son and five daughters. Mr. Wooster and his son Horace are thought to haunt the home, but the youngest child, Helena Ruth, is said to be the most prominent ghost in the house. I think that this, this place gave her a sense of um, who she was in this town and, and in her lifetime, and it's a safe place for her to be, and, it, and it, I think it gives her a purpose in the afterlife. The home has attracted ghost hunters who, with their psychic abilities and electronic equipment, say they have discovered the home is made of more than brick and mortar. We're constantly um, tripping up or down the stairs as they got to this area. That's because they believe there's a vortex that serves as an entryway to the spirit world. So, they moved it. It was right in this area here. Um, it just was sh sort of shifted over. And, How do you um, actually do that, though? It's, it's um, a lot of metaphysical energy work. Emotional or unresolved issues sometimes cause spirits to stay in the human world, Miss Kent says, noting that Mr. Wooster is bound to the home he wanted to remain within the family. When you die and you ask in writing for something to be done and it's, you know, just blatantly violated, uh, I could see why he might come back and, and uh, be a little upset. Just yesterday, Nicole Hall of Connecticut Soul Seekers says she heard a voice while setting up equipment for an investigation. I heard my name called. So I said, what? And it, it wasn't, you know, any of the other people that had called my name. Um, second floor area, looking around, seeing where we're going to put the cameras. And I heard a voice say, let's see. And it was none of my teammates that had said it. Mr. Sharafa, who bought the home for $200,000, closed the restaurant and retired in January. Despite his personal affinity for the ghosts, he listed the home for $500,000 and just sold it for $360,000. Mr. Sharafa says he is unsure what the new owner will do with the property. One possibility is to raise and develop it. Marion O'Keefe, interim curator for the Seymour Historical Society, says it would be a loss if it were torn down. This is the history of Seymour and a major part of the history with both Worcesters and the Matthews family and it would be a shame if I have this to, to be lost, especially where it's right off a of main road. Everyone can see it, and it's a greeting into this side of the city of how historic we are. Mr. Sharafa and the paranormalists also think Ruth would not take kindly to losing the house. Personal opinion, if she's been here this long, and she loved this place that much, and she's really attached, I wouldn't see any good possibilities for whoever's going to put a business or a strip mall or anything here. I, I think she would wreak havoc. <laughs> For some, these stories are just that, a fun Halloween tale. I usually find a logical reason. If a door slams, the wind took it. <laughs> For The Wall Street Journal, I'm Sushil Chima.